Falstead Derrick is a step up from the more easily dispatched enemies that you've faced in the game prior to this point. You'll face this boss twice, the first time he'll retreat when he gets low in health, and the second time he'll transform after you deplete the original health bar, leaving you to deal with another encounter immediately. For the first phase, or the entirety of the first encounter, I find it preferable to be at mid-range against Derek. This gives you plenty of time to react and dodge the incoming attacks, preventing yourself from being staggered or killed. Slow and Steady wins the race for this phase, one or two attacks with the Brothers Keeper daggers whenever possible and you'll slowly work them down. You can of course use other weapons, but personally I think these really outshine any other option for weapons in the early game. Again, notice how often I fall back to mid-range in order to prepare the character to dodge the next set of incoming attacks. With some practice, you'll of course get accustomed to a few of the attack patterns that this boss has as well. Although it's certainly a beatable encounter by using parry, I find dodge far more effective and exclusively use that for defensive purposes. It's strongly recommended that you upgrade the equipment you have on when you reach this encounter as well. The additional damage from an upgraded or even enchanted weapon and the mitigation upgraded armor provides is huge, especially since this fight is going to last longer than anything prior to this point. Keep in mind you have access to daily and weekly quests at Sacrament once you've come this far in the game as well. It's fairly quick to level by completing those quests that bring you back to previous areas you've already completed in the game. The additional resources for creating food and other non-combat aspects of the game is also beneficial here. To recap for Phase 1, slow and steady wins. Look to land 1-2 to two hits during windows of opportunity. Play at mid-range whenever possible. Hogging Derek is not a good idea in this phase. Be prepared for two phases in this encounter, lots of food, oils, etc. Be an appropriate level with upgraded gear. Level 9 without upgraded gear was possible, but very difficult. Level 11 with upgraded gear was pretty easy. Levels at this point are easy to come by, so go grind a bit if needed. In fact, it's probably quicker than spamming multiple attempts given the length of this encounter. At roughly this point in the first encounter, Derek will retreat heading to the sewers where you face him now. If you've reached the sewers and are battling him for the second time, you'll need to finish off the remainder of his health before he transforms into the second phase. This may vary on your own character, but Phase 1 seemed more difficult for me personally, as it just seems to hit harder than the Phase 2 version, leaving you less room for error. Just like that, you'll enter Phase 2, and the tactic will change slightly. I still find dodge preferable to parry for this phase, however, close range is now better than mid-range. The mutant is a little slow, and seems to have difficulty turning. Getting up close and personal seems to work best. This will allow you to continue pathing around in circles while dodging the incoming attacks and slowly working the enemy's health down. This phase will play more quickly, and although it'll only be a bit shorter than phase 1, it plays more lively, and you'll be looking to land more hits and dodge less often. Although the mutant seems to hit for less damage as well, it attacks quicker, and that can make using food more difficult. Again, this just emphasizes how strong I think the Brothers Keeper daggers are, combined with health leech, in the early stages of the game. In general, for both phases, make sure you reserve a tiny bit of stamina in order to use dodge. There's no time limit, and being unable to dodge can easily lead you to a swift death. Often, it's better to continue dodging while your stamina replenishes to nearly full, rather than looking to land a single blow on the enemy. The mutant does have a long range attack, which it will use periodically, but overall it's not a super threatening attack unless you are nearly dead to begin with. Keep up the repetition, and eventually this boss will fall leaving you with the spoils and an interesting twist to the story. I'll leave the remainder of the gameplay so that you can watch the encounter in hopes that you learn some more. Best of luck, and as always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.